Hello, my name is Major Liz Doyle. And I'm Captain Brandon Sykes, and we are board recorders for the Department of the Army Secretariat for Selection Boards, also known as the DA Secretariat. This training will provide information on the officer and warrant officer selection board processes. This is the outline we will follow. We will first highlight what a DA selection board is, then explain the Memorandum of Instruction or MOI and review the types of officer and warrant officer selection boards. We will explain how the boards work and focus on the selection board process, discussing what you can do to prepare yourself and others for the next board. Lastly, you will have an opportunity to see how a board member votes a file. A DA selection board is a process that requires senior leaders to assess and recommend candidates for selection or promotion. Senior leaders are typically appointed by the Secretary of the Army or the Chief of Staff of the Army to serve on a special duty assignment as a board member. Board members then travel to the DA Secretariat for Selection Boards located within the Human Resources Command Complex at Fort Knox, Kentucky for the execution. Board members receive their guidance through the MOI from the convening authority, typically the Secretary of the Army, Chief of Staff of the Army, the Army G1, the Director of Military Personnel Management or DMPM, are the Chief of the United States Army Reserve. The MOI mandates they review all files in the population and decide for themselves how to score each candidate's file without prejudice or partiality. Board members are strictly prohibited from discussing candidates' files or individual voting philosophies with other board members. Exceptions to this rule include General Officer and Special Mission Unit Command and Key Billet Boards, which include personal knowledge discussions in accordance with Department of Defense Instruction 1320.14. Due to these strict guidelines, board members must take an oath and convey 100% faith and confidence in the board process. Selection board operating instructions come in the form of an MOI. It is the principal document governing the operation of a board. The MOI's framework is a synthesis and interpretation of multiple inputs, including U.S. law, DOD policy, Army regulation, and current senior Army leadership guidance. Its contents may vary as the Army's structure, strategy, procedures, and demands continuously evolve. The MOI delineates the board's mission. It addresses goals, selection objectives, outlines any specific skill requirements, and equal opportunity consideration. It does not mandate specific results to board members. We will now take a closer look at the various types of selection boards that are conducted at the DA Secretariat. The DA Secretariat executes over 90 centralized selection boards a year for the active and reserve components. The boards identified on this slide are governed by law, which include all promotion boards for Chief Warrant Officer 3 through Major General and Selective Continuation Boards. Special selection boards convene because of a mission from the original board or to reconsider officers who were not selected based on a material error. Special selection review boards convene because of adverse information not considered by the original board. Enhanced selective early retirement boards consider captains and majors, while selective early retirement boards consider lieutenant colonels and colonels. The boards identified on this slide are governed by policy, but generally mirror the board processes of statutory boards. Promotion review boards command review boards, and promotion advisory boards convene to determine if selected officers should remain on the standing selection list. There are 17 general officer boards held at the DA Secretariat, which include brigadier generals, major generals, chief of the special branches, and other boards for the Army Reserve components. Now that you've gained a basic understanding of the various types of selection boards, we will look at the board membership. Board membership composition is as prescribed by Title X U.S. Code. The Office of the Secretary of Defense, OSD, Policy, Army Regulation, and Army G1 Policy. The DMPM approves membership matrices for specific scheduled boards annually. Preliminary requirements derived in law state that a promotion board must be appointed by the Secretary of the Army. Have five or more officers as members serving in a grade higher than the grade of the candidates under consideration by the board, and provides minimal ranks for the relevant board.
The Army, through regulations and policy, chooses to be more restrictive by regulating that all board members must be in the grade of lieutenant colonel or higher. It must meet specific branch and minority requirements to ensure fair representation of the considered population. Additionally, board members are required to have successful careers, no derogatory performance, and when applicable, command selection. This is an example of a membership composition of an Army Competitive Category, or ACC, Lieutenant Colonel Promotion Board. The ACC is divided into four categories based on a candidate's branch operations, operational support, information dominance, and force sustainment. A DA selection board is one of the most important duties an individual performs. Board duty takes precedence over all other duties since board considerations have far-reaching effects on the mission of the Army and the professional development, morale, and well-being of its soldiers. Membership requirements cannot deviate from the established policy-based criteria unless exceptions are approved by the DMPM. This is an example of a membership composition for a reserve component Lieutenant Colonel Promotion Board for the Army Promotion List. Policy dictates that a majority of the board members will be reserve component officers. However, active component officers can serve as board members for reserve component boards. This is an example of a membership composition for a Chief Warrant Officer 3 through 5 Promotion Selection Board. Preferably, a Major General will preside over the board with four colonels and seven chiefs warrant officer five from the following branches, aviation, ordnance, quartermaster, and military intelligence. We will now transition to board operations. Over the next few slides, we will explain the process of how board members review and vote candidates' files utilizing the Army Selection Board System, or ASBS. This is a photo of a boardroom. Each board member will occupy a workstation equipped with both a nipper and zipper computer. Access to the boardroom is restricted to board members and support personnel only. A candidate's file will be displayed in this order. Scanned documents can include letters to the board president and retirement memos. When specified, the DA Form 4187 will appear after scanned documents. Next is the performance section of the Army Military Human Resources Record, or AMHER, which is pulled directly from iPerms. To ensure the most current information, ASBS, is synchronized with iPerms on the board convene date. The evaluation section of the performance record appears first and includes all officer evaluation reports and academic evaluation reports listed in chronological order. It is a misconception that only your last five evaluations are seen by the board. Education and training are next, followed by the commendatory portion. The last section displayed in ASBS is reserved for adverse information, separated into four parts. Response to adverse information, disciplinary information, restricted information, and other information of an adverse nature. All documents with adverse information and substantiated investigations of an adverse nature will be visible to the Promotion Selection Boards in accordance with Title 10 U.S. Code 615 and Title 10 U.S. Code 14-107, as implemented in the Fiscal Year 2020 National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA. Soldiers are authorized to write a letter to the President of the Board to highlight matters of record which they feel require consideration. These matters are normally reserved for extraordinary circumstances. An example would be a candidate who is hospitalized for combat-related injuries or has not received an evaluation in two years. A poor example would be arguing a mediocre evaluation was received because the senior rater did not like the candidate or communicating to the board president how great their file is. Although addressed to the board president, the letter will be seen by all board members. Please refer to the board's MILPER for submission instructions. Please note, candidates with adverse information are authorized to submit a response to any adverse information within their file. This is separate from their letter to the board. Service members should ensure that AMHER is accurate at all times. However, if it is not, work with your unit's HR professionals to correct it prior to the board file closing. Ensure duty titles are accurate and reflect the duty assignment that is listed on the evaluation. 
Additional areas of focus have been overseas and deployment data, military education, civilian education, and awards and decorations. Religion, marital status, dependent data, and dwell time information are masked to board members as it should not affect their vote. The next three slides will cover evaluations. The main purpose of the evaluation system is to convey candidates' performance and potential to selection boards. The rating chain must clearly communicate their assessment to the board. Board members routinely comment that raters and senior raters should plainly state what they want the board to know regarding a candidate's performance and potential. Raters and senior raters are recommended to use the narratives to amplify the box check and enumeration to amplify the narrative. Raters and senior raters should be concise, candid, and quantifiable. Board members notice when rating officials use the copy and paste method. Board members often refer to the evaluation as the most important part of the board file. The value of a well-written evaluation cannot be overstated. The rater's narrative should clearly explain what the rated officer achieved. The narrative should quantify and qualify the performance measure box checks. Exclusive narratives from senior raters describe superior potential above that of the vast majority. Strong narratives should describe the rated officer's potential for promotion, assignment to key duty positions linked to upward mobility, and potential for appropriate military schooling. For example, number two of 20, promote below the zone, and must select for SSC. Enumeration is helpful to board members. However, narratives should be honest and accurate. If 10 of 20 majors all have comments about being in the top 20% from the same rating chain, board members will notice the mathematical discrepancy and the evaluations tend to lose credibility. The senior rater profile requires the rating official to reserve the most qualified assessment for those who are truly deserving. While the box check is important, the senior rater's narrative is critical because it amplifies the box check and the candidate's future potential. The administrative information on the senior rater profile label is designed to assist board members. It allows them to quickly identify when an immature profile and or small population exists. An immature profile is when the senior rater has rendered five or less reports for a particular grade. In this example, this senior rater has two total ratings in his profile, making his profile immature. A small population is when the senior rater's population is three or less for a particular grade. The senior rater has a large population of 17 officers in the grade of major. However, when combined with the immature profile, a board member would expect to see a highly qualified box check. If the same senior rater rates this officer in a subsequent evaluation with the large population they have and the service member's potential remains the same, a board member would expect to see a most qualified box check on the next evaluation. We will now transition to the selection board process. The following slides will walk you through the selection board process. The mission of a selection board is to recommend either fully qualified or the best qualified candidates to meet the needs of the Army. Board members will identify candidates who, in majority opinion, should be required to show cause for retention on active duty or in inactive status. We will discuss in later slides what happens if a candidate is recommended to show cause. And lastly, special boards are conducted as needed. This is an example of a hard vote word picture. This document is used to help voters assign scores to candidates' files. On the left, you will see the 1 through 6 plus and minus scale. Board members will award a single score to each candidate's file. The use of plus and minus identifiers will further delineate a candidate's position on the Order of Merit list, or OML. For example, a score of 5 is higher than a 5 minus which is higher than a 4 plus, and so on. In this example, the fully qualified line is drawn between a score of 2 and 3. The fully qualified line serves to separate those candidates who should not be selected based on their performance and potential. During officer boards, a score of 1 will initiate the show cause process. 
After all voting is complete, ASBS totals the scores for each officer and produces an OML. The OML will be used to identify fully qualified and best qualified candidates. To vote the entire population free of prejudice or partiality, board members must develop their individual voting philosophy. An individual voter philosophy is the consistent application of the MOI, senior leader experience and judgment, and the word picture as they assess the contents of each board file and subsequently apply a score. Typically, board recorders will administer a practice vote consisting of a diverse selection of files from historical boards. This is done to ensure board members are comfortable with the voting process prior to record voting. While board members may view a candidate's entire file, the focus is typically on evaluations. Board members take as much time as needed, but on average spend no more than a couple minutes per file. We will now cover the voting process. During a board, this process will be repeated until every candidate in the population is evaluated. Board members will vote all eligible candidates using the scale depicted on the word picture. Once voting is complete, board recorders run an aberrant vote report. An aberrant vote is when a file receives two or more scores that may vary by three or more whole numbers. For example, your file receives a score of a 5 plus and a 2 minus. This is a whole number difference of three and is aberrant. Your file is then sent back to the voters who gave you the 5 plus and the 2 minus. The voters have no obligation to change their score. This is done as a quality control measure in case something was missed during the initial screening of a file and is only done once. All necessary ties will be broken and the final OML will be generated. Both the fully qualified and tentatively best qualified line are drawn. The tentatively best qualified line is determined by the Army's maximum selection objective. The merit-based promotion line is drawn when stated in the MOI. This slide graphically depicts how the board identifies fully qualified candidates. In this example, there are 17 board members. Board members will vote all eligible candidates in the population to establish an OML. The highest score a candidate can receive is 102 plus 17, meaning all 17 board members voted a score of 6 plus. The plus and minus identifiers do not affect a whole number score. The lowest score a candidate can receive is 17, meaning all board members gave the candidate a score of 1 or a recommendation to show cause. If we draw the fully qualified line between 2 and 3 on the word picture, the lowest score a candidate can receive to be fully qualified is 51. Candidates below the fully qualified line are not fully qualified and cannot be selected regardless of requirements. Candidates must first be fully qualified before they can be best qualified. Now we will fill requirements utilizing the MOI. In this example, we have an OML from 1 to 20. Depicted on the left side of the slide, the MOI provided us the maximum select rate of 11 and a maximum BZ select rate of 1. In addition, the MOI specified skill requirements that must be filled first which in this example are Special Forces, or SF, Armor, AR, and Aviation, AV, which leaves us with two at-large requirements. Earlier, we drew the fully qualified line. In Phase 3, the tentatively best qualified line is drawn. The BZ population beyond the maximum BZ requirements are administratively removed since there are no further requirements they can fill. First, we fill all skill requirements. Then, we fill at-large requirements based on OML order. Although fully qualified, Majors Anderson, Hunt, and Marybell could not be selected as there were no remaining requirements. While in a lower position on the OML, Major Michaels was selected because they are filling one of the three requirements for SF officers. This demonstrates that a candidate does not have to earn the highest score to be designated best qualified and recommended for promotion. Candidates not identified to fill requirements above the fully qualified line are simply not best qualified to meet the needs of the Army. Certain boards will have merit-based promotion opportunities established in the MOI. 
merit-based promotion indicates the top performing candidates within the population, and they will be first to promote regardless of their data rank. In this example, the merit-based promotion was set at 20%, which means two candidates, regardless of their zone of consideration, will be identified for merit-based promotion. Here is an example of a reserve component Army promotion list to Lieutenant Colonel. The board processes are similar. However, there are distinct differences on how requirements are filled. Three separate OMLs will be created for the Army National Guard, Active Guard Reserve, or AGR, and non-AGR. Requirements are filled based on the MOI, but are not filled based on competitive categories. Reserve component requirements are at large. In this example, we have an OML from 1 to 20. Depicted on the left side of the slide, the MOI provided us the maximum select rate of 11 and a maximum BZ select rate of 1. The fully qualified and tentatively best qualified lines are drawn. Any candidates below the fully qualified line cannot be selected. The BZ population beyond the maximum select rate are administratively removed since there are no further requirements they can fill. Requirements are filled based on OML position and not branch. In this example, merit-based promotion was set at 20%, which means the top two candidates. Now we will discuss adverse information. Department of Defense Instruction 1320.04 defines adverse information as substantiated adverse findings or conclusion from an officially documented investigation or inquiry of any other credible information of an adverse nature. Now we will discuss adverse information. Department of Defense Instruction 1320.04 defines adverse information as a substantiated adverse finding or conclusion from an officially documented investigation or inquiry or any other credible information of an adverse nature. To be adverse, the information must be derogatory, unfavorable, or of a nature that reflects clearly unacceptable conduct, integrity, or judgment on the part of the individual. To be credible, the information must be resolved and supported by a preponderance of the evidence. Some exceptions are motor vehicle violations that did not require a court appearance, findings more than 10 years old, unless it could have resulted in more than one year confinement, and information previously considered by the Senate. However, all permanently filed derogatory information in the performance section of the candidates AMHER will be shown to the board. Implemented in the FY20, NDAA, and in accordance with Title 10 U.S. Code 615 and Title 10 U.S. Code 14-107, restricted, adverse, and substantiated investigation information contained in a candidate's AMHER will be presented to promotion selection boards. Once the information is discovered, candidates will be notified before the board convenes and given reasonable time to respond. For further details, refer to the board's MILPRA message. The recommendation is to own it, be clear, concise, and employ spell check. NDAA 21 effective 1 January 2021 directed the establishment of the Special Selection Review Board, or SSRB. Candidates selected for promotion with substantiated adverse information not shown to a promotion board will undergo an SSRB and per the Office of the Secretary of Defense memo dated 20 May 2021. This applies to major generals and below for all components, but excludes first lieutenants, chiefs, warrant officer two, and fully qualified selection boards. Adverse information can be found in three forms. Examples for each are listed on the slide. Derogatory information is filed in the performance section of the candidate's AMHER. Restricted information is filed in the restricted section of the AMHER. It is often placed at the direction of a Department of Suitability Evaluation Board or Army Board of Correction of Military Records. Other information will be determined by the Secretary of the Army and reviewed by the Headquarters Department of the Army G1. 
relevant information that could reasonably and materially affect the deliberations of the selection board will be presented in the form of an adverse summary. This is an example of an adverse summary, which outlines the candidate's name, the agency who reported the incident, and the date the inquiry was found. It provides a listed finding from a criminal or administrative investigation or inquiry, a summary of the incident, and the final disposition. Board members may or may not have access to the original investigation. Any department of the Army Selection Board, including promotion, schools, or command boards, can recommend a candidate to show cause unless otherwise indicated in the board's MOI. Additionally, a show cause action can be initiated by the commanding general of HRC or by an officer's chain of command. In accordance with Army Regulations 600-8-24 for active component, 135-175 for reserve component, and National Guard Regulation 635-100. The criteria to evaluate a candidate's performance includes, but is not limited to, substandard performance, misconduct, moral or professional dereliction, and actions inconsistent with national security. Candidates who receive a show cause recommendation are then reconsidered by the board through a yes or no vote. If a majority of the board members vote yes, meaning they recommend a candidate show cause, the recommendation is forwarded for further action by their appropriate commander. This slide documents the appropriate commanders for initiating show cause proceedings. This includes the commander of HRC for active component, active guard reserve, individual ready reserve, and individual mobilization augmentee candidates, the chief of the Army Reserve for troop program unit officers, and the director of the National Guard Bureau accordingly. As we conclude this training, here are helpful regulations to reference while preparing for promotion and selection boards. AR 25-50 is the reference to employ when preparing letters to the board president. Other regulations include officer promotions, career progression, and evaluations. The requirement for updated DA photos has not ceased, although they are not presented to the board. Here are some helpful links to assist you. HRC's website has a lot of relevant information to employ when preparing yourself or others for a selection board. Talent managers are a good source to contact with questions regarding your career progression. There is also a mock board video available related to enlisted board processes. The board preparation checklist is a useful resource when preparing for selection boards. It is critical that you take the time to ensure your board file is accurate and current. One of the most important steps is to read the Milper message announcing the board. Published 90 to 120 days prior to the convene date, the Milper provides specific information and instructions for the board to include My Board File open and closure dates. Using the My Board File application, eligible candidates can view and certify their board file. This allows candidates to identify deficiencies for correction with their unit's HR professionals. Lastly, all eligible candidates' files will be presented to the board regardless of certification status. Documents posted to the official record after the board file is certified and prior to the board convene date will be seen. We hope that you found the information we provided informative and expanded your knowledge of the Army's selection board processes for officers and warrant officers. For more information, visit the HRC website at www hrc.army.mil or contact your local HR professional. Thank you and have a great day.